What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw hands. Now a lot of beginner artists find hands to be a challenge and believe me, they are. The reason it's a challenge is because um, try to imagine the hand as like an octopus with only five arms. They can move in a whole lot of different directions. And another thing people struggle with is that the hand can also be viewed differently. Like the hand can be viewed like this, like this like this in so many more ways so that's what i feel people struggle with when it comes to drawing hands to me it's a bit more challenging drawing it from reference even though it does sound easier but you struggle to try to match the same position of the hand but that's what i feel people struggle with when it comes to drawing hands but before we get into actually drawing some hands in this video i'm going to show you guys the different parts of the hand that way you get an understanding about which part does which so right off the bat we got the thumb which everybody knows because it's the only finger that's different from all the others uh, we got the index the middle the ring and the pinky like we learned this as kids the index finger is the one you point with the middle one you use to flick somebody off the ring finger you put a ring on if you're getting married or whatever or just have a ring on in general and your pinky finger is the smallest and down here you have the palm what the palm does for the hand is when you grip objects it doesn't slide through your hand. If I say I want to grip this marker, if the palm wasn't there, it will just slide right through it because the palm acts like a kind of cushion to help you grip something without it sliding through your skin or possibly damaging it. Now here's, here's an easier way of looking at it. I have a kneaded eraser, which can function as like a little cushion or a palm actually, see? Helps you grip it just fine. So that's pretty much what the palm does. And then of course we have the wrist, which I wear my bracelets on and my watch. Now right up here on each finger, right there where these lines are, those are called the phalanges or phalanx for singular. You know that we have joints for our arms and legs? These are kind of the joints on the fingers specifically. But one thing to pay attention to, since like I said, the thumb is kind of different from all the others because it's one of the smallest, it only has one phalanx, the, all the other ones have two phalanges. So when you bend one of these fingers, you can go in one, two, and three. Coming off of the base of the hand, the thumb can only go off of the hand and just bend once. The others can two more times. So that's pretty much everything that the hand can do. Also, this is a right hand. So right here is my right hand. So what you're looking at right now is the skin part of my hand, and the thumb of my right hand is on the left hand side. However, if I flip it over, the hand that I have drawn here, the thumb is on the right hand side. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I struggled with this at one point too. And I also feel it's a mistake that beginner artists use when they're trying to draw hands is that they misinterpret the placement of the thumb. Because like I said, it's the only finger that's different from all the others. So sometimes when you're drawing hands, you might misplace it. So it's gonna end up on this side or it's gonna end up on this side. So, so that's just something I wanna throw out there to you guys because it's important to remember. But now that we're done talking about this, let's get started with actually drawing some hands. So I'm going to start off drawing a basic hand. So what I like to do when I'm drawing hands, I like to start off with like a quadrilateral as a start for the hand. Because as you can see, the base of my hand looks like a square. And a square is a quadrilateral. And the reason I say quadrilateral instead of square is that any four-sided shape. Because you got the wrist right here. You got this side of the hand, this side of the hand that connects to the thumb, and then the base for the fingers to sit on. So that's why I want to start off with any kind of quadrilateral. But of course it doesn't work with every kind of hand movement, but it's just something to start out with. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw sort of like a trapezoid shape. Okay, and then we're going to place the thumb on this side, so it's going to be my left hand and the thumb is going to be on the left hand side because I have it open like this so the palm will show. So right here where this point is, right there at the end of the wrist, we're going to come off and make the thumb. When we come off, we're going to make a little triangle right here and then right off this triangle, we're going to construct the rest of the thumb. So I'm going to come up like this, 
and then I'm going to come back down and make sort of a sliding board coming back to this other point on the triangle and finishing the thumb okay and now before we get into drawing the fingers I'm going to divide this entire line by four so I have the halfway point here I'm going to divide these two points in half and this will help me draw the fingers so another thing that will help me draw the fingers is by drawing a little pentagon shape up here because as you can see because let's take a look at the hand one more time. So the middle finger is the longest finger here. And what we did, we started out with the thumb. So the index finger and the ring finger will be the same size. So when we come off of here, it'll escalate up to the middle finger length. Then it'll come back down to the ring finger length. And then it will go back down to the pinky finger because that's the smallest finger. So that way we have one side, two, three... Four. And then the base for the quadrilateral that we drew here is will be the fifth point, which will make a pentagon. So that's what we're going to do here. Let me zoom back in real quick. Okay, so we can go back up. And this is three, four, and then the base is five. Now, of course, the pentagon doesn't need to be this big because the hand itself already looks big. So what we can do is we can make this line come back down. Like we can have it coming closer to the thumb. Cause this is a cartoon hand. We can change it to be any kind of shape. We can exaggerate it if we want. So as long as I brought that one down, we can bring our pentagon shape back down. So we can have it coming all the way up here. like this this looks like a good place so we're gonna get rid of this but we still got to divide this line back into four pieces like that's not hard to do all right and now we can begin drawing the fingers and when I draw the fingers I don't include the phalanges So we got one finger and then for these next two the middle and the ring finger I like to kind of connect them so like this is how I like to do it so we can make a looping shape up here and see how it looks like one big wide giant finger so now that we got this point here we can draw this one as if it were a finger itself and now it looks like a pair of scissors a little bit, but no. So we're going to split this line in half and draw one finger. You can start off with either one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to start off with the ring finger and have it connecting like so. And then that leaves us with this line, which will tell us the position of the pinky finger. So we can come off of this point and follow this line to make the pinky. And then, we're, and then I'm going to come back down to the wrist and go back up, connecting that line that we just drew. And then right here at the thumb, we're going to make a little line like this for the palm. And then I'm going to add a few more curves to the thumb to emphasize the palm a little bit. Something like that. Then I'm do the same thing on the other side. And there, you got a basic hand right there. But of course the fingers do look a little bit long for the thumb, so that's why. You can also change the length of the fingers. That's why I didn't include phalanges in there. So, I didn't follow the pentagon like I drew here, but um, you can go up to it now. 
Because changing it won't be that hard. We got a little stopping point there. Now that looks a little bit more promising. Because you don't want to make the fingers too big for the thumb. I mean, I know they're a little bit longer in length compared to the thumb, but you want to kind of make sure it goes together. And then something I always like to do when I'm doing this, like the line that we drew here, I just erased it, but I like to have it coming in between the two. I mean, I like to have it um, connecting to the, the middle finger and the ring finger, like so. So I feel once you get the fingers right, because like I just did, we just changed the length of it like a few times, then we can draw the phalanges. But to me, that's not all important because the style, the unique style that I have, it doesn't include phalanges or it, or it doesn't include a whole lot of details like that. So most of the time I just don't add them in there. But other than that, that's how you draw a basic hand. So let me show you how to draw this hand, but at a different position. Okay, so the hand that we're about to draw, we're actually going to start off with sort of a triangle shape. I know it kind of misled to the, what I said earlier about starting off with a quadrilateral, but when I, when I say I'm going to start off with a triangle, that means the entire hand, including the fingers, will consist of a triangle, and then we can break it up into a quadrilateral later. So it can make it look as if I actually started with a quadrilateral. So this is, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make the wrist, which is two lines like this. And then the triangle will be curved. And then it will come right up here. It won't necessarily hit this line because we got to make room for the thumb. Okay, so there we got a triangle going on up there. And then right here is going to be a stopping point so we can put the fingers in there. So now this shape here, that's a quadrilateral. So it looks as if I started out with it, but instead I drew the triangle first, and I'm working from that. Okay, so right off of this point here where the wrist is, we're going to make the thumb. At that position. And there's our triangle if you want to use that as a guide. But of course I already drew it, so I guess I guess in case you want to do it in the future. But it's right there. But now what we can do is we can break this line here into four pieces for each finger. And then the tip of this triangle, that will be for the middle finger. So wherever it is, we get connected to. So wherever that point is, however you drew it, that's going to be where the top of the middle finger will be. So since that will happen, any finger that will sit behind it will kind of be covered up a little bit. But it all depends on how you draw it. So instead of starting there, we're going to work from here first. So we got the edge of the triangle we can work from. And then right here will be our middle finger. And of course we can also change that because it looks a little bit longer than the other. Okay. And then right here, we're not going to use the triangle. And then from right here, we're not going to use the rest of the triangle to draw the ring finger, which is supposed to be right here. Because like I mentioned earlier, whatever finger lies behind the middle finger here will be covered up. Not much, but it'll be covered up a little bit. So we can come off of here and just have it resting behind this middle finger because we want to kind of keep that tapering shape going on for the hand. And then we're going to do the same thing for the pinky finger, which will be a little bit easier because we're just going a little bit smaller with it. So you can either start from up here or work your way from here. That's up to you. 
it's gonna it's gonna get covered up a little bit more since the pinky finger is smaller than all the others. I'm just gonna add a little bit of emphasis to the wrist, but that's an option to you. So that's how you draw this hand. Hopefully I can try to do that myself. It's kind of hard to see at the position I have my camera at, but that's what we did. Okay, so now we're gonna draw a couple fists. And the way to start out drawing the fists, it's a little bit different than drawing the hand. Um, let me show you how. I'm, so when you're drawing a fist, you wanna start off with like a rectangular prism. So it's gonna be a little bit more challenging because like we did with this other hand, we started off um, with a 2D shape. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this come inward a little bit, so it won't necessarily look like a rectangular prism, but it'll come inward just a little bit. So we're gonna call it like a trapezoid e old prism, I guess. But it's gonna look a little bit more like an upside down trapezoid. Okay, and now we're gonna curve the bottom part of it like this. And then that's going to be the wrist. So we're going to make some lines coming off of it. And if you want, you can make it a little bit bigger or make this base kind of smaller. It's up to you. And now to start off, we're going to come off of this point here. And we're going to connect those lines with the, with the wrist with like a, a small slight curve. And then we're gonna follow this line here and make four different uh, fingers. So to make it a little bit easier, we're gonna do what we did down here and we're gonna divide this into four different sh uh, pieces. All right, and then we're gonna connect those with a bumpy line. So right there are where the phalanges are. So that's what those uh, little curved lines are. And then down here, we're gonna make a smaller line just like that and that's gonna be not the palm but like the other side of the palm because the thumb is gonna be on this side yeah so what I'm drawing here is not the palm And then right up here is the thumb. So we won't necessarily see it on this side. So we're gonna see part of it coming like this. So, we, so now we know that the thumb is there. And then we can connect that finger down here. And then up here are the knuckles. I'm just gonna draw like small lines up here. And then at the beginning, we drew a line right here. So after we did this line, that kind of makes the wrist a little bit smaller in comparison. And now that's the that's the new position of um, the wrist or the other line to make the wrist how it should be. And then I'm just going to draw a little bracelet on it. It's a little off, I know, but just something on there. Okay, now down here, we're going to draw another fist. We're going to draw the same thing as we did here. We're going to start off with the same guidelines, except we're going to see more of the thumb, which means we're going to draw the same one as if it were on this side, if you know what I mean. So start off with the same guidelines, um, a rectangular prism um, that looks more like a trapezoid. And make sure to make changes to the actual guideline before drawing the hand if you want it to be a certain position. Okay, so actually, let me start over here. So yeah, it still looks like a trapezoid. And we can work from that. 
Okay, so again, we're gonna divide this into four pieces. And then next, we can draw in, we can draw on the thumb starting from here. So, and the thumb will kind of be creased, so it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to draw. So instead, we're gonna make a circle off of the palm and we're gonna come up to right about here. Instead of it, well, instead of making a circle, we can make a curve right up here to this point. Then we're gonna make an opposite curve like this. And then the failing, and then the actual thumb, which will look something like this. All right, and then for for the fist that we're about to draw, we can split this entire shape into four different pieces as well, because they'll go along with the fingers. Okay. And then we can begin to make those curves. And then I'm gonna make, a, and then over here, I'm just gonna make a little crease because this little phalanx right here, this is the only finger that will show it on this single fist. The rest won't be seen because the one will be covered up by this one, this one will be covered up by this one, and and so on. So this is the only third phalanx we'll see. So that's why I'm drawing this line here. Everything going forward should be a little bit easier. And then up here are the knuckles. And then since it ends pretty much over here, I'm going to take this line and I'm going to curve it back down. To make the other side because the palm is right here so this will not be the palm but it's gonna be somewhat curved a little bit like the palm and then just make the wrist however you want and then a little emphasis on the phalanges and then change up whatever else you want to change up and you're done now for this last one, we're gonna draw like a casual hand. The casual hand position your hand would have if it's just hanging off your sides. Like if you got your hands by your side, that's the hand position that we're gonna draw. So, start off with a quadrilateral. We'll start off with like a rectangle. And then I just add a little triangle for the thumb. And again, we can have it coming off like this and curving back on that triangle, which will come back to the square, or rectangle I meant. And then just like what we did with the other one over here, we're gonna make it into a triangle. Actually not a triangle, something that almost tapers, but doesn't exactly taper. Taper means it comes to a point like up here. But no, we're gonna stop right about here. And then what I like to do is, um, I like to divide the finger into two parts. So like say this will be the halfway point. So for this hand movement, I'm gonna try to disregard this last phalanx right here. So we're gonna make this line go up a little bit to match this line down here. And then one finger will be at this position The other half of the finger will look like that. And also, let me make it a little bit bigger. And part of this hand, and I forgot to mention that part of this hand will look as if it's at a profile view. So don't expect every finger to be visible because like, because the pinky finger will be at the end of this chain of fingers here. So expect it to not be visible. 
or at least if it has to be visible then you can draw it um, however however you want but if you're drawing it the way I am it may be visible it may not be but keep in mind it doesn't have to be visible and for this next finger the first part of it will kind of match the one we just drew and then I'm gonna have it coming inward so that way the tip of this finger won't be seen And then our next finger will do the same thing and the pinky finger it will kind of be hard to see here like I just mentioned but you can draw it like that but again it's at a profile view but don't try to pressure yourself to kind of like fit it in there you don't want to shove the pinky finger in there and it doesn't look right but what you can do it might not look right either but you can kind of draw the pinky like this Maybe that'll help, but again, that kind of doesn't look right, but you don't have to include it in there. So, but what you can do is you can change the position of this one, but it'll still have that same shape. And then a tiny portion of the pinky will be shown right here. And that looks more promising than having like an extra finger like that. And there, that's how you draw a casual hands by your side hand position. But anyway, that's my video on drawing hands. Hopefully the tips that I explained in this video helped you in any kind of way, like starting out with basic shapes, doing what I just did. But these are just beginning hand movements. But if you really wanna learn how to draw hands, especially hands just like these, it just takes practice. But do keep in mind that these are just cartoon hands. These aren't realistic hands like on comic book illustrations. And I don't provide a lot of detail in the hands that I draw, as you can see here. Also, if you do wanna do comic book drawings, then this is a good starting point because eventually you'll see hands drawn just like this because I like the way this fist is drawn and I see this drawn on comic book illustrations but with a lot more detail to it but anyway if you liked the video and you found it useful give it a like and a comment if you're new to my channel I do lots of drawing tutorials speed drawings art challenges and more so if you haven't already subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I'll see you in my next video I got my nigga like